Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here, and today I have a fabulous project for you. Yesterday, I was looking at my stamp sets and looking at things I hadn't used yet, and I came across the Hey Birthday Chick stamp set that was introduced at the beginning of uh, this year, and I just came up with this really cool idea with it, and I think you're gonna love it. If you have a sense of humor like me, and um, I, I think you'll love it. And, and I love things that pop up in it. So it's going to be great. I, I know you're gonna love this. So um, I don't know how to best uh, show this, if I should show it um, to you um, when the camera's facing down, um, because it, it, it's, it's a little hard for me to hold up on the side. But here, here's the outside of the box and the surprise is on the inside. So let me show you that in a second because if I um, uh, open it now, uh, all the kisses are gonna fall out and it's not gonna show itself to its best advantage. So um, I'll save that for a second. Um, if you know me, you know my channel and all, I do send out a project sheet to my email list subscribers on Saturday, which people tell me is super handy to have. It's like condensed down onto one page. It has the supplies, the measurements, everything you need. I've even included on the second page, which you don't have to print out, um, but I've included a little diagram to show you how to cut the box, just so that there's no question um, and everything. And um, so if you subscribe to my email list, that will be sent to you sometime tomorrow on Saturday um, so that you can um, use it as a quick guide to make this um, this box. The probably the, the hardest part, and it's not even hard, um, or the most different element is the spring element. There's actually a spring. Let me pull out one of the springs I made. I made a bunch of sample springs of different heights, but um, the inside, um, there's the spring element. Um, so this is, this is the cool thing that I'm going to show you how to make, um, for the inside of the box. That's going to, um, make this box really, really fun. Um, so this is the hardest part and it's not really hard at all. Um, but what you want for this box, um, because there's a spring on the inside, you want like a nice little snug box and I'll show you how to make that too. And so I think you're going to love, love, love this. All right, what else do I have to tell you? If you enjoy this video um, and you wanna see more of my videos in the future, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And um, if you have a comment for me, I really appreciate it. And also if you um, would give my channel um, a thumbs up, if you like my channel, I, I would really appreciate that too. Okay, I am going to switch my cameras over, make sure it's on, make sure my volume's on. Okay, let me switch over to my other camera so we can I can show you how to make this. All right, let me set up my project sheet over here so I can follow it. Um, sometimes I think I know my project so well that I don't need to follow my project sheet and um, that's really messes me up sometimes because there usually is a proper way to do things. Um, before we get into the box, um, this used to be a bundle, but now they're they're available separately. So you'll need to purchase the Hey Birthday Chick stamp set and the Birthday Chick dies. You don't, well, I shouldn't say you don't need the dies. I love the dies, especially for this little happy birthday die cut right here. Um, and it allows you to cut things out really quickly, especially the surprise element um, chick on the inside. All of that you can die cut quickly and easily. So if you have a die cutting machine, I suggest getting both of these um, uh, to work together. And so you'll see in a moment why you need these. All right, so here's my box. It says happy birthday on the outside. And then when you open it up, you've got a chicken on a, let me hold the kisses so they don't fall out, on a spring, okay? So, um, but the inside of the box says, you're still a spring chicken. <laughs> I love puns and things like that. So this is just really fun that you have a spring chicken on a spring can dump out all of the um, kisses. Um, this little guy will wobble and wiggle even more without the kisses in it. But even if you put some kisses in there or some small candy or something like that, this guy is still 
going to um, spring up and, and wobble. So it's really fun. I've put about 10 kisses in here and I just kind of nest them around um, the spring and it seems to work fairly well. And when I put this on, I just, um, I don't even hold this down or anything. I just kind of scoot this down and it just um, stays shut perfectly like that. So it's no problem at all. Isn't that cute? I just love it. Okay. I'm going to show you how to make this. And so first of all, we need to create a box and we need to create a good box that this little guy will fit into. And we're going to use two sheets of, or two pieces of, um, cardstock. And the nice thing about this is you only need uh, one sheet of cardstock and you can get two um, of your base pieces out of that. So that is like kind of really economical um, way. One sheet of um, cardstock will create one box for you. Okay, so the first piece, they're slightly different in size, but you're going to score them at the same measurement. Both of them. So this piece here is a five and a half inch square. So that means it's five and a half by five and a half. And we're gonna score this piece at the one and a half inch mark on all four sides. So just keep scoring and turning. And it's very important for this that you do one and a half on all four sides because on the other piece well this piece it won't matter as much but on this piece the next piece you must score at the one and a half inch mark on all four sides instead of skipping over to the other mark over here um, it just you have to do it at the one and a half inch mark just trust me just do it like that um, it will make your life easier okay so now i have this piece is just slightly shorter on both sides um, than this piece. So you cut this at the five and seven sixteenth inch mark. So that means it's one sixteenth of an inch shorter than the five and a half inch mark. Okay. So let me just show you on the ruler. Some people have trouble with sixteenth of an inch. So let me just give you, I don't know if I can hold that up well enough, but See on my ruler, we are like at the five and a half inch mark, but we are one tick shorter. Okay, so that is the five and seven sixteenth inch mark. Okay, so just on both sides, five and seven sixteenth of an inch. And then um, we're going to score this at the one and a half inch mark on all four sides as well. One and a half, one and a half, one and a half one and a half not too hard at all all right then you can use scissors for cutting the tabs i'm just going to bring out my little diagram right here so you can see but this is a fairly straightforward box very common so oh my score lines are really really light on my printer but basically think of a tic-tac-toe board this is what it is um um, scored at and we're going to cut up um, along the score lines on either side um, just to the first score intersection and my gosh that line is a lot lighter on my uh, draw program it's a lot lighter I might go back in and redo this diagram so um, it prints up nicer for you that's the advantage of um, me sending them out on a um, on Saturday and not the same day. So maybe this you can see a little bit better, the tic-tac-toe board. So basically, I'm going to cut this with a cutter rather than scissors because I can get really straight lines. So um, it, it's hard to get a perfectly straight line. So I'm taking my score line and lining it up right here um, with my cutter groove and I'm just going to move my cutting blade I'm going to stand up so I when I do this so I can see where I'm cutting I'm going to um I've got this arm lifted up and I'm just going to cut here lift up move it to the score line that's right here my little line lines up 
and then I'm going to cut it. This allows me to get some really nice straight cuts and then I'll do the same for the other side. I'm just going to line it up right on that score groove, right centered and just move my cutting blade over, cut, lift, move it over to the right spot, bring it down and cut. So that's what it looks like. Okay, and we'll do that for the other one too. Since these um, are absolutely symmetrical, it really does not matter. Um, you know, you it doesn't matter which side you do this on because they're so cut through there. And come here. All right, I'm doing actually steps one and two simultaneously because it was just easier to do that. In your uh, project sheet, I have the measurements and step one is the top and step two is the bottom. So now you just need to figure out which of these two pieces is bigger because the bigger piece, right now it's on the bottom, the bigger piece is your lid. So you do kind of want to make notice of that because we're going to put some thumb holes in the lid and we don't want those in the bottom. So now we're going to take a bone folder and I'm just going to fold this piece along all four sides. All right. So now we're going to bring this in and I'm just checking to make sure my um, box has, um, it's nice um, on the top, like there's not too much overhang coming up here. If there ever is overhang cutting coming up here, what I do is I take note, okay, this side is overhanging, I kind of grab it and then I'll put it into my cutter and I'll just trim off a hair sliver off there. And that will just make this tab piece a little bit more flush. But I actually, this time, got a pretty good um, cut and everything. So it's just almost perfect. So I'm just going to leave it like that. And what we're going to do is put Tombow on the four corners. We'll start off with just two. This is a very standard kind of box and just bring that one in. And you just want to make sure that your um, score lines, your ends match up nicely here. You have a few seconds with the glue to kind of pull if you need to. You just want to make sure it has a nice finished look to it. Let me bend this back and we'll put um, Tombow now on these two tabs. And on this one. All right, bring those in. And again, just line it up nicely. If you want, you can press down while it's on its side. All right, so this is going to be the lid of the box. So I want to take a one inch circle punch, one inch, three quarter of an inch works as well. I have two sides that have an overlap of cardstock. That's where we brought in the tabs. And then we've got two sides that is just a single layer of cardstock. So I'm going to aim for the single layer. And what I'm going to do here, I'll show you. This is the single layer side. I'm just going to bring in my punch about halfway and centered on that side. Okay, I like that. And then just punch it so that you can grab with your thumb on the bottom of the uh, box later on. And we're going to do this again. Just make sure it's centered. And this is the opposite side. So we have this side and then this side, okay? So that just gives us that little thumb 
cool. All right, let me see if I did everything that I need. Yes, so this lid is now complete, except for the decoration, which I'll show you how to do afterwards. So let's finish the bottom of the box. We'll do the folding, and it comes together really the same way as the top. The only thing we're not gonna do on the bottom is the thumb holes because we don't need them here. All right, so now we are ready to bring this box together. Start with two corners glued, bring these together, overlap, and then just hold that down for a few seconds, press down. Okay, then we'll come to the other side, put Tombow on this, and Tombow on this one, and then we'll glue this together, just line it up nicely, score lines go right to the edges, and if you did this with a cutter, I feel like you're gonna be really happy with how straight everything is. It's so nice when, when you can do that. Our paper trimmer, I really, really love it because um, it's very good for that. Okay, so let's test out our box and make sure it works. It's gonna be a snug fit, okay? So because we, we want it to be snug, but you see it's snug, but it's not bowed or anything like that. That sixteenth of an inch shorter on each side of the bottom of the box gives you like a nice snug fit. And then you can pull this, the thumb grips are there so that you have something to grab onto. So that is the box. Now, you're probably wondering how did I do the spring? All right, I experimented with um, different spring heights and I, I, here are my experiments, so um, I, I finally came up, uh, tall is cool, but when you do a very tall spring, um, it tends to, you know, you can, it actually a tall spring will fit inside this box if you do a taller one, but if you do a really tall one, the, the top of the chick tends to um, bend over a little bit. So, you know, if you want a taller one, you can do a taller one. Um, and so I just experimented with different heights. I felt like we needed to go a little longer than an 11 inch strip. So all of these strips, um, you've got, I'm gonna do four of them, okay? Um, and they these all measure eight and a half by half an inch. And I try to get the width the half inch, you know, when you're cutting sometimes like your half inch might be a little bit off. I tried to make sure that these were pretty much all the same, like identical. If I stack them on top of each other, they're, you know, all the same width. It, it just makes for an easier fold. It won't, if, it, if yours is off a little bit, it won't be terrible or anything like that. But I just found like if, if you could have them all pretty much the same with your your good so eight and a half by half an inch you're gonna need four of those and we're going to take the first one and we're going to glue them overlapping I'm gonna overlap them about half an inch that was too much glue you probably here I'll show you on this one because there's glue oozing out and now I've got sticky fingers all right so on the second piece, we're gonna do the same thing. This time, I'm just gonna put a dot of glue right in the center, like that, okay? Then I'll have it ooze out to the sides, but it won't be um, oozing out onto my fingers, hopefully. Okay, and this does not have to, the, the connection point doesn't have to be precise because as you fold, um, 
it, it, one strip will probably end up just a little bit longer at the end than the other and we just trim off the excess so basically what I'm doing is I just wanted two really long strips so if you measured these they're gonna be um, just over um, they're gonna be uh, not quite 17 inches so this is about 12 and so not quite 17 just somewhere between 16 and 17 inches um, long once I'm finished folding it okay so now what we're gonna do is we're going to glue these into um, kind of an L shape I'm, I'm like a right angle right here okay um, so I'm gonna start maybe I should do it Yes, I'm going to do it an L shape, just like I said I would on my, my sheet, okay? So we're going to do these at right angles. And so, again, I'm just going to pop a dot of glue on the end right here. We're going to create an L with these two strips. Just hold that for a second until it doesn't wobble around anymore. Okay, my strips are partly off camera, but that doesn't matter. All the action is going to be happening here. Okay, so right here, this strip right here that I'm holding and wiggling up and down, this is my bottom strip right here. Okay, so I'm going to take my bottom strip and fold it over the top strip. Okay, now this one's my bottom strip, and I'm going to fold it over and now this one's my bottom strip fold it over and as you go along whatever the bottom strip is is what is going to get folded over okay so just keep folding that bottom strip over top of the other one each time I do this, I think I'm going in a different direction. It doesn't really matter which direction you go. The main point of this exercise is whatever strips on the bottom gets folded over top. Okay. Don't you wish I had time lapse right now? Because this is the boring part. But it's cool because you're making a spring out of paper and you don't need a metal spring or anything. It's just a regular paper spring. It's very hard to believe that in a moment this will look like my other springs. I feel like it's twisting a little bit shove it back over and if you lose your um, your uh, wherever you're at just remember it's always the bottom one that folds over so don't worry I just kind of got lost a little bit so just remember bottom bottom okay I've come to my my joint right here so I'm just gonna keep going and doing the bottom okay I feel like I've twisted this thing around in a different direction now but it doesn't matter it's it's gonna come out right just as long as you keep folding the bottom just keep tying yourself. Just keep folding in from the bottom and all will be well. This is, it is a, a, a long, um, a big spring. So it just takes a second to get to where we need to go. almost done I feel like I need some music 
and a time warp so that you don't need to watch me do the whole spring. But maybe that's useful to see the whole process. You could always fast forward if you're watching this as a recording till I get to the end so I can show you what to do with the very end. Okay, so I've got one here and you see there's a little bit of overlap and then I still got this piece. So let me fold this over and this last piece needs to be glued down. So I'll just take a dot of glue and put it here and then I'm just gonna hold this down for a second. And in the meantime, while I'm holding that down, I'm gonna go underneath all of my stuff and grab my scissors. Okay, so it basically looks like a little tiny stock. And then I'll just trim off these little excess pieces like that. And if you want to try this at first with just an 11 inch strip, 11 by half inch strip, just so you can get the idea without having that seam in the middle, just so you can do a practice strip, do two 11 by half inch strips and then that will be good. Okay, so here is my spring. Ta-da! So fun, right? So when this is in the box, it's gonna spring. We're gonna glue this to the bottom. So it's going to spring up like that and then it's gonna have that wobbly element to it. So let's open up the box, make sure that, okay, I'm gonna have, it doesn't matter at this point. I'm, I was gonna say which side is the, the bottom, which side's the top, it really doesn't matter at this point. Um, just pick which um, one side of the spring to be your bottom. I'm gonna put a dab of glue in the center. And then I'm going to aim this right into the center of my box. Scrunch this down. And make sure it looks fairly centered. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, and now I'm gonna hold this down for about 10 seconds. Um, just to make sure that it actually sticks because um, those kisses are going to be in there if you put candy in there. So you want to make sure that this is actually really adhered well to the bottom of the box because you don't want it coming loose in transit. So just hold it down for a few seconds. And once you like how that feels, then you can see there's the the spring element inside the box. All right, so now we just need to do a little decoration for the box. So we're gonna start off with the top of the box and I've cut myself a piece of Whisper White cardstock. This is two and a quarter by two and a quarter. Earlier, I actually die cut a piece of the uh, happy birthday. Um, here is my die my happy birthday die and I ran that through the die cut machine with some of the ombre specialty paper and this um, is the blue one and it has sparkles I don't know if you can see that it's a little bit ombre it's a little lighter on one side and um, my light it's morning light it's um, but it's got a little bit of sparklies on it okay so I die cut that and I have my little um, chick right here and I'm gonna stamp my chick right onto this piece. But I want to make sure um, that I get it in the right spot. So I've just kind of, you know, put my happy birthday down where I think it wants to go. And I did trim around this little guy a bit just so I could see a little bit better where his edges are and stamping. So I just want him right about here he or she okay so there's the little um, guy right there and then I want to have um, uh, a balloon as well so how did I um, get the balloon so there's this big um, stamp it's this one right here with a balloon on it so I stole the balloon from there so 
and just take yourself, I am grabbing a piece of basic white cardstock and I'm just gonna ink up half of my my chicken here just the part with the balloon okay and oh, I got a little bit of ink on here um, so I don't need the whole chicken because I just need the balloon and for the inside, I'm actually going to also need um, this chicken right here. So let me ink this one up right here right now. Okay, so we've got both of those. We'll color everything all at once. How does that sound? And I will bring in my die cutting machine just in case, um, I know sometimes I have people on here that have never seen die cutting before, so I kind of want to show how that would work. So here's my die cutting machine, bringing it in. Okay, and um, my handle right here will be off camera. It's what I'm going to use to crank everything through. Okay. So for die cutting, you're going to need your base plate, number one, your thin die adapter, number two, uh, a cutting plate, number three, and then another cutting plate, number three. We'll put that on last. Let's cut one at a time. I always feel it's a little easier to cut one at a time. We'll cut this um, chicken out first. So just kind of you know, make sure it's centered around your chicken. And then bring in the second cutting plate, carefully place it on there, making sure you don't shift anything. And then we'll run this through. Okay. So that looks pretty good, right? And that's a little easier than fussy cutting for some people. And then right here, let me just cut this piece off because we don't need that anymore. I like to work left to right, but the machine cranks both directions. If you prefer to work right to left or if you want to work left and then go right, you can do that. Um, but do what makes you happy. And I'm just going to center this around my balloon. I'm not even paying any attention to um, the chick that I stamped because I really only care about the balloon at this point. Well, actually, you know what? I might want to care about the, because that string might not be centered, so maybe I should care about it. <laughs> I should care. All right. I don't want my string cut off. Okay, so carefully putting that on there. And then I'm going to cut. Okay. Okay, that's not too bad. Throw that out. And I don't need this bottom piece for the chicken, so I'm just going to cut right there. And now I have just my little balloon that I need. Okay, so now I can put this away because I've cut my happy birthday and um, I think I've cut everything that I'm going to need. All right, let's bring in the pieces that I want to color so that we can do that all at the same time and I'm going to bring in my um, um, Stampin' Blends. Now I'll tell you right now my um, dark pumpkin pie Stampin' Blends has lasted forever but okay sometimes when I open it up um, this top part comes loose and you can see the ink on the inside. When that happens I just put it back in put the ink back in, put this back on, and uh, it's still fine. It's just, it just came loose. Um, so you just need to stick it back on. And then I just kind of open the cap a little differently and then it opens up fine. Um, it's time for me to get a new, um, I've had this since the very beginning, this color, and it's uh, about time. So for this guy, I just need to do the little beak. And um, for this guy, we're gonna do the beak and the little legs. That's 
Oh, and you know what? I'm also going to do, even though this isn't an outline, I'm just going to go down there and color over top of his feet. Okay, and then I'm going to take, um, I'm going to take the light poppy parade and I'm going to do the top of the head here. I'm going to do down here. I think that's it. Oh, and I'm going to do um, the two stripes of the hat. Oh yes, and I'm going to do the balloon. So how do I do the balloon? So the easiest way, I'm going to take my brush tip. I want to create a spot where the light is going to shine. So I just do a circle somewhere on, circle it's an oval, and then I'm going to color around it. This is my way of making sure that I leave a white spot. I create an oval. And then I'm going to color in the rest of the balloon. I'm going to come in with my Poppy Parade Dark in just a second. And then I'm going to do some blending. Balloons are a good um, thing to practice on with your shading. Okay. So that is how I would start the balloon. And then I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna darken this part of the balloon and take my bullet point and I'm gonna come up around the edge of the top of the balloon like that. Okay, the bottom of the balloon. Now I'm gonna take my Poppy Parade bullet point and I'm going to blend in, blend in, blend in. So I kind of blend in the color so you can't see the line where the dark and the light mix. All right, so there's my balloon. Okay, so that's how I do the balloon. Okay, and then um, for the chick, I'm going to use um, the Daffodil Delight um, bullet tip, the dark, and I'm just gonna come in and do the chick. The eggshell is white, so I don't, I'm not gonna color it. Okay. So that's my little chick. Then I'm also going to do a little bit right here on this, this hand, this chick. Um, I'm gonna do just here the, um, I'm gonna switch to my light. Um, and I'm just gonna hit all of these little tufts of feather or whatever with a little bit of the actually you know what that could have been orange right there because that's its other little leg I'm going to come down here and just shade around the bottom a little bit let me see if I can get this open again without having my okay let me do this little leg here also be orange okay so I think I've got everything colored that I need colored all right it is time to finish off the top of the box so I'm just gonna take my happy birthday add a little Tombow to it you know what my Tombow needs a little little help. I'm going to do that paper clip method. It feels a little clogged to me. I don't know why. Oh, now it's really flowing. Okay, I have to be careful not to squeeze now that I declogged it. Okay, if I get a little bit too much glue in places, I'll just like take this and like an edge of a scrap piece and just um, scrape a little bit of the globs off so that I don't have like too much excess 
And then I'm going to come in here and just add this down here. And this is the top of my box. So I'm going to add this on here. I don't want to squeeze too much. Okay. So just make sure your thumb grips are on the side, okay, when you're gluing this down. And the top of the box will have the thumb grips, just so you can remember, and this one will have the spring, right? And then, um, oh, before I stick on the balloon, because the balloon's going to overhang, I just wanted to add just a little bit of a um, decorative strip around the edge of the box. And this is just some of the Bright's Designer Series Paper Pack. And um, this is 5 eighths of an inch wide. I'm just going to fold this in half, 5 eighths by 5. And we're going to glue this around here in two pieces, 5 eighths by 5, because the box side is 2 and a half. Okay, so it's going to be like that. And then I'll do the same thing for this one, just fold it in half. All right, so it's better to start on the thumb grip side. Just put some Tombow in the center. And you want to glue this just right above the thumb grip. Okay, so it's not. And then come over here. That looks good. And come over to the other side. Okay. Too much tumble. And match this up. Okay. And then match this one up. All right, and that just gives the edge of the box just a little bit of a breakup from all of that solid color. Okay, now I'm gonna glue on my balloon and my balloon's sticking off just a little bit just for the fun of it. The Stampin' Blends do bleed through, so that's no surprise. Um, that's what happens with Stampin' Blends. But they are very intense, beautiful colors, so um, if you don't, if you're not showing the reverse side, it's fine, or you just line the reverse side. Okay, so I'm just adding my little birthday balloon on there, and that is the outside of the lid. And for the inside of the lid, let me just grab another scrap piece of cardstock. I'm going to use the, make sure I get this name right, this is called the Label Me Lovely Punch. And I'm going to punch out one shape out of basic white. And this is kind of the fun part, the, um, where did my ink pad go? Put it somewhere safe, right here. Um, this is kind of the fun thing because this um, says, um, this says, you're still a spring chicken. So it's kind of funny that, you know, you're making a box with a spring and the chicken. So um, this one, I'm going to stamp it close to the bottom like that. So you're still a spring chicken. And then this little guy, he didn't quite fit on there very well. Uh, maybe I could have die cut him. Um, but what I decided to do instead is this um, die set has another little chick in there. So I thought, why not die cut him? So I just took a piece of Daffodil Delight cardstock and I cut a little chick out of the Daffodil Delight. And so he's going to come on there, like right there. Just a little bit of Tombow. Okay, and he's going to be just on top like that. And then 
you know, his eye looks a little dull because it's just a hole right there. So I took my Sharpie and I just made his eye black with my Sharpie just so it, you know, had a little bit more character. So now make sure you've got this in the right direction up, down. And then I'm going to put a little bit of Tombow on here and glue this inside the box. It, you know, if you're going to do more than one of these, you might want to do this while your box is still flat because it's a little easier to glue in. But you know what? I think I did pretty, pretty good. So there it is. You're still a spring chicken. All right, so now we just need to attach our fun chicken onto here. So, okay, we're gonna do this. Put some Tombow right on the spring. You don't wanna put the, the glue on the chicken because you don't know um, where the spring is exactly going to be. So, I'm just going to this looks about right. I'm going to press this down. Back. Okay, let's try this again. I'm going to hold on to the spring. My spring has twisted a little bit. That's fine. You just need to decide where your chicken's going to be on the upswing. And then when you press down, it might twist a little bit, but that's okay. Um, it's when it springs out, it doesn't have to be exactly where it is. This two and a half inch wide uh, box on either side gives you just plenty of room for that chicken. It um, gives you some room to play with. Okay, and I just am holding that down. And now I've got my little chicken. Isn't that cute? So you can leave it like that or you can grab some kisses. And just when you do it, I used about 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, grab two more, 9, and 10, you know what, this one for balance could be over here on this side. So you can put some small candy in here, okay? Um, and it, it still works fine. You just want to make sure that you've kind of got it nested around your spring. And then the spring, you know, it's so cute. You're still a spring chicken. I just love it. And then when you're closing it, just remember, you don't need to push this down or anything. Just the chicken just needs to be in there. And then you just need to close up the box like that and it's absolutely fine because um, it's gonna um, be right flat against the top of the box okay so that's also going to help it um, if the kisses move around I mean it is stuck to the top of the box right now so it's not gonna get crunched or anything and then when you lift it off it's just gonna pop right up and um, it's gonna be really fun so you know, there's a lot of different ways or different things that you could put on this spring, um, but I think this is gonna be one of the most fun because it's got that matching greeting. You're still a spring chicken, it's so hilarious. All right, what do you think? I think it's kind of fun. I'm gonna go back now and um, talk to you and look at some of your comments and see what you think see if you have any ideas of what else you could um uh you know do with it but uh good morning everyone good morning ellie and Ver blue and um Debra. good morning Birgit and lynn and janine kristen melita oh i'm so glad to have so many of you on um here Ellie says, I love the spring and feel like there will be other fun uses for it. Yes, 
have fun with this. I think this is a nice size box for many different types of images. You might need to adjust your size box or maybe even your spring if you're going to do a bigger one. Um, I really like the size of the half inch spring because I feel like it's light enough um, and um, you can make it quite long. Like this one here is two 11 inch um, so it's two 11 inch by half inch pieces end to end. So it's almost like, it's almost 22 inches long. You need two 22 inch piece long pieces. And then that makes a really big spring. Um, so, you know, you can play around with the, the size and stuff, but, uh, they're fun. They're so much fun. And um, I made this out of um, regular basic white, not the thick basic white. Um, I don't know, I actually didn't try it out with regular cardstock. I'm sure it works fine with regular cardstock too. Um, I like the basic white a lot because it's a little thinner, so you can fold it a little bit easier. Um, I feel like it's gonna be just a tad bit easier to do that, the folding back and forth with the basic white versus our regular cardstock, which is a little bit thicker. So, um, Kristen said that's what she thought. Spring, spring has sprung. Yes, that, that would be really cool. It, you know, I think what makes it really cool is if you can find a greeting that has the word spring in it or, you know, something that, you know, says pop or you know um so that you have something to put in the inside of the box that you know really coordinates with your image that's popping out good morning bev well i'm so glad you like this everyone's loving the chicken oh and i have someone here from mexico that is awesome i've got germany covered i've got mexico covered that's really fun um linda says um this is fun never did a spring before well you will have to try it and and i would suggest trying it out with a scrap piece of paper first and so you can get the hang of it um i don't know that i did this uh spring a hundred percent perfectly the one I just made, but hey, it it looks it looks good enough, right? Um, it's it's just gotta have that um, foldy element that wants to spring up. Um, it just takes a couple minutes to do that fold, and you know it's not hard at all. I'm holding it down, and then it springs up. So fun, so fun. All right, guys. Um, if you need the hey birthday. Uh, um, chick stamp set or the um, the birthday chick dies um, I put them um, the the list of um, supplies um, in the YouTube video down below or click over to my blog where you can see some um, still photos and you have a clip clickable supply list that you can um, um, get to um, I do have a host code so if you want to pick up um, if you want to spend $50 with me um, to the end of July, I have a designer series paper sampler pack that I will be sending to my customers who order from me this month. So if you want to pick that up, make sure you um, click down below, um, click over to my blog and all of the information for my host code and everything like that is there. And if you spend at least $15 with me, you'll get to choose one of my free with purchase tutorials. Um, for everyone else, um, they have to uh, pay for them, but you can get it free when you place an order with me. All right, I think I have said everything that I need to say. Um, I just hope you guys all have a wonderful weekend. August is starting on Sunday. I can't believe it. Um, uh, coming up in August, um, Stampin' Up! Um, we are going to be doing celebrations. So um, stay tuned next week. I will be um, switching gears and showing you um, some of our fun celebration products. All right, guys. Have a fabulous weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.